This video in my railway history series is all about plateways and tramways. That is the very earliest type of, of railway lines that operated across, um, across Britain and indeed across Europe. And uh, these were the ones that developed in the late 18th century, although there may have been much earlier examples around mines and um, they developed mainly to provide communication between the uh, mines or quarries uh, and uh, to carry the product of those enterprises down to canals or rivers where they could be transshipped into uh, boats of various types and then sailed around to wherever they were uh, required. So they were actually part of the uh, great canal boom in uh, in Britain in the in the um, late 18th and early 19th century and they acted as feeder lines. Now the picture that I've got here shows um, a typical plateway uh, operation with a single cauldron wagon as they were known with um, a driver actually sitting on the brake lever and leading a horse behind and this is because the wagon is fully loaded and it's being taken down from the quarry or mine down the hillside down towards the river and you can see there's a couple of boats over on the left hand side and some sort of chute where building with a chute where these wagons are tipped contents of these wagons are tipped down into the boats ready for transshipment now these basically are road vehicles they don't have flanges on the wheels they're conventional road wheels of the time and um, a flange instead to keep them on the track uh, which was put down because the, the primitive roads themselves would often get very uh, cut up and rutted by repeated use by these heavy vehicles so the flange was put uh, rather um, first of all timber and then metal plates were laid down at the gauge of the wagons and the flange on the plates rising vertically kept the wagons onto the uh, plates of the rails and you can see in this ra rather primitive drawing that um, there's some sort of blocks or something underneath the plates at various intervals. These were often made of stone and um, they acted as the side, the ends, uh, the end supports for each of the plates so that the plates would um, carry the wagons. The horse incidentally is once the wagon is offloaded the horse then is tied on the front and hauls the empty wagon back up the tramway um, uh, led by the driver or controlled by the driver and uh, these these uh, tramways were very common indeed uh, we can still find occasionally evidence of uh, their existence really quite rare now uh, here for example there are stone blocks still in place and you can see they're comparatively close together although the distance is foreshortened by the view of the photograph but the the, the blocks themselves would be uh, cut out of granite or some other hard stone and then holes would be drilled in the top and you can see on the bottom left hand corner the one there you can see there's been quite a bit of detail chiseling out and um, the plates would sit have extensions at each end which would sit down into those chiseled out hollows and then wooden spikes would be driven through uh, into the holes and then metal spikes through the, the rails into the wooden spikes acting as uh, rule plugs basically uh, into the stone and they're only about uh, up to maybe 30 inches or a yard uh, long um, and some of the plates would have a sort of a fish belly uh, underneath them so as to help strengthen the um, weight uh, strengthen the um, plates themselves so they could carry the wagons and the flange at the side of course also would be quite substantial. This is an advertisement for um, the Surrey Iron Railway. This was created um, as a private company as you can see it's the Committee of the Sun Surrey Iron Railway Company 1804. They basically laid a railway from Croydon and um, Carshalton up to the River Thames at Wandsworth and this is unusual because they it isn't just one company but the company itself is the railway as opposed to the railway being an adjunct of a mining company so it's a public railway which means that if you have a wagon and a horse then you can by paying the toll you can put your wagon or, or cauldron 
or weight of goods per ton as you can see there are different um, rates there for different con for containing different things and you can move up and down the railway independently as a carrier and you pay the toll so it's an extension of the toll road but it is using a new piece of technology for 1804 which is this uh, plateway um, right of well, no, it's not a right of way plateway uh, form of communication which makes it easier for you to transport materials from one end of it to the other. The reason why they're popular, or relatively popular, is because the amount of friction between the wheels of the wagon and the plates is much less than the wagon running up and down a road with all its ruts and uh, bumps and all the rest of it. So a horse can actually haul a greater quantity uh, than before on the, on the, on the roads and you paid a toll for this so the whole system is based on the old toll road uh, system but um, the, old, the toll road network and um, but you had to there were a number of other rules there's quite a series of rules connected with the Surrey Iron Railway for example when you met uh, a wagon coming in the other direction who had right of way and uh, you could move these you could drag these um, wagons off the iron railway easy enough because it did damage the flanges on the iron railway uh, but the Surrey Iron Railway certainly is one of those early ones and unusual in that it's in um, South London at the time in 1804 this is a year before Trafalgar so it's quite extraordinary that it should be up and running um, to this degree this is uh, an example of the uh, uh, comparison really between a plateway or tramway and by the way the term tram is probably derived from a, a Welsh stem word um, rather than the name of uh, Outram who was one of the engineers of the time it's just a coincidence that his name ended with tram but the tramway and plateway is on the right and the conventional edge rail uh, system is on the left and um, you can see there that on the right the children wagon the cauldron wagon uh, has its has ordinary wheels road wheels it would run on the road perfectly okay although they are very narrow tires on those wheels but it's held in place by the flange being on the inside so the gauge of the wagon has to be absolutely correct for a plateway just as it does for what we see on the left hand side which is the edge rail which is the conventional form of these days where the flange is not on the rail it is on the wheel and you can see the flanges there on the wheels on the left hand vehicle but on the right hand vehicle the flange is on the inside and you can see that the gravel has been packed up on the inside of the flange both to give it to su support but also to give a good path for the horses um, to tread upon and so the plate ways themselves are really quite remarkable um, the, the uh, blocks are visible there underneath both because early edge rail railways Use, stone, use the same system, no cross ties, no sleepers, uh, they use stone blocks and the gauge was maintained by packing those stone blocks down into the ground and building up the um, ballast very tightly all around it. So with that uh, example we can then move on to have a look at some of the actual plates that we use including one of the points. Uh, so um, the ones, the, the four there, the four examples, top right gives you an idea of the sort of uh, plate where it's got a fish belly, in fact three of them have examples of fish bellies where extra iron is cast in to the plate so as to give it greater structural integrity uh, in the middle because essentially it's making a bridge between two stone blocks one at either end and then the uh, extra little fittings uh, the, the notches at each end in the one top left you can see how they're meant to lock together um, not very successful. Uh, others there you can see there are various uh, uh, rectangular holes or square holes cutting the ends and this is for the fixing spikes uh, that went into the stone blocks which had, had the wooden rule plugs um, put in. Bottom right then is a typical uh, plateway point. It's just a simple pivot unpowered and all you do is kick it over. Uh, to whichever direction you wish to proceed in and uh, these would have been um, on each side of the plateway there would have been uh, these arranged and um, but very very primitive in fact some plateways don't even bother with these 
they just assume that the horse uh, is going to be led in the correct direction so you can just cross over and so the, the um, because it's been going along at relatively low speeds uh, then uh, it can be under the control of the driver who is the man who drives the horse or controls the horse of course once they're loaded and if these wagons get onto a gradient then of course the main thing that has to be done is that the uh, speed of the wagon is kept to a minimum which is why that large brake on the first picture I showed you uh, is so important but a very simple brake just pressing against one of the wheels uh, on the on the rear axle here's a photograph of a, uh, a plateway system that existed well into the uh, Victorian era well into the middle uh, and latter part of the 19th century and you can see the operation very clearly here You've got large cauldron wagons, very simple in construction, uh, very simple dumb buffers, and they'd be just linked together with a, a single chain or a couple of chains. And you can make out the, the tracks here, they're very obvious, and certainly at the front, you can see the way that the plateway, uh, the flange is on the plateway and sticking up, whereas you've got ordinary wheels on the cauldron wagons. And you can see a horse in the middle distance there patiently waiting to do something with whatever that wagon uh, is going to be done there. And these sort of plateways existed right the way through to almost to the end of the 19th century, serving little industrial concerns for uh, quite a number of years. I think there's much else there to comment on that. I think they're all pretty straightforward. Here's a closer view uh, of uh, at a uh, railway museum. Uh, and it gives you a clear idea of the very simple types of point work. Uh, you can see on the middle left there, up against the wheels of the little uh, wagon chassis, uh, one of these pivoted parts of the point. And um, I think as long as you have one of these on one side, then of course the, the wheels on the other side are just going to follow around with whatever's happening at this end of an axle. So I'm not sure they ever had um, a pivoted piece on both sides. Uh, but again you can see they're quite crude uh, it's all uh, cast iron so it's quite brittle um, and so and they're short lengths and fitted in and well ballasted in to um, cover over the blocks and you can see how much lower the actual plateway stood above the ground than the conventional edge rail which you can see in top right an example of that This is my own model of a uh, plateway track and uh, you can see that what I've done is I've made the stone blocks, uh, concrete ropes, other granite blocks that we used and I've designed very simple uh, flanged rail, L section rail with the characteristic raised section in the middle but I've not done a version which has uh, a belly, a fish belly to it. I've just left it fairly simple. Uh, and when this creates junctions, this is in trains 2012, it, it just creates the usual uh, type of junction that we find in trains. So there's no, um, uh, there's no, there's no uh, uh, check rails or anything like that included in it or tie bars. Uh, at some stage maybe I'll do a procedural track version for trains a new era, tame, um, and uh, I've just got to work out all the different bits and pieces that I need to do that. Uh, but that's something I'm planning for the future. Uh, it still creates these the usual junctions, as you can see, here's the junction overlay for this particular junction. This is just the demo route, by the way, which I was using for another um, railway history demonstration. But you can see here, it all works just as any track spline. Uh, and I've set these, these are in very quite short sections, I think they're about a metre long, so that you can do quite sharp curves, which is always a characteristic of plateway track, and um, uh, allowing for all sorts of uh, straight configurations. Now obviously this is looking, this is just in, in just sort of general landscape, just very quickly knocked up with a bit of texture, uh, but it's just to demonstrate, you can see there the space actually between the the blocks and the uh, the rails very very clearly the plates 
And the other thing about this plateway track is that, of course, it is set at the standard trains railway simulator height in order that the locomotives don't float over the top. Uh, I suppose I could have mucked about a bit and, and dropped the um, spline in the model making phase in GMAX a bit lower and it would have taken um, the locos down a bit lower as well. But I just wanted to keep things simple at this stage. Uh, you know, if I feel so moved, then maybe uh, at some stage in the future I'll produce a much more refined version of plate weight track. And of course, it's the uh, can only be used for the types of locos which uh, were designed to run upon it. So here is uh, Trevithick's Penny Darren uh, locomotive, and uh, as you can see, it's got conventional flangeless wheels. So it's basically a road vehicle that's just been adapted to run onto these, this metal, metal shod road, roadway, effectively rail road rather than a railway or railed way. There's a couple of, couple of wagons there. we we'll just zoom around my little, this is just a demonstration layout. I don't think I've got any others, any other locomotives on here, but there are several others which I've modeled, which I will do as separate entries for my railway history series. For YouTube and uh, so there we are there's plateway track or tramway track not named after uh, your man Outram uh, that's just that really is just a coincidence and um, the track here then is uh, just for the use of flangeless vehicles don't be putting flange locomotives on this it would look absolutely ridiculous but if you want to model something that started in the very last years of the 18th century and lasted until at least to the middle of the 19th century if not a little bit later then um, this could be quite a successful little addition to any uh, Victorian railway period 19th century period railway layout and could act as a feeder line down to a canal quite a short feeder line uh, nine miles was the one down at Penny Darren so um, it gives you an idea of the sort of scale the length that these little lines ran and just have it running along um, and if necessary I know you can get a horse uh, as a set as a locomotive on the download station so you could certainly add a horse to supplement the steam locomotives or the steam locomotives to supplement the horse and have a horse pulling one of these wagons down to or rather an empty one back up from the uh, uh, from the canal side or following the cauldron wagon down to the, the canal side. So there we are, that's plateway, tram, plateways and tramways. Uh, quite an interesting little aspect of early railway history, I think. So um, our, my next one will probably be another plateway locomotive. And um, so look out for that. And if you like this video, then please subscribe to my channel on YouTube. It's absolutely free and there's no commitment whatsoever uh, but it really sort of boosts my um, inclination to produce a few more of these and if you have any comments please post them and if you want to download this track then go to my website the details are at the end of this video